Shout out to BWB, man. BWB, nigga. Shout out to BWB, man. You know what I'm saying? Big Wagon Buffs, man. Shout out to Big Wagon Buffs. Thank y'all for coming. BWB, baby. Shout out to TLP Sports Club, baby. Buff Nation, what up? BWB, my band wagon. Buffs, what it is, what it does, and what it's gonna be. It's your man's Harry Billion. Welcome to the Liberian Perspective. Yes, I am on the voiceover. I told you, if you can't beat them, you gotta join them. If I got something quick that I can't get to the studio for, I'm gonna give you guys this voiceover right here like everybody else is doing. And why not? I can do what they do, but can they do what I do? I don't know. We're gonna have to find out, aren't we? Anyway, guys, have y'all looked at the numbers lately? We are approaching 5K. No, we gotta go live for that we're gonna go live to celebrate this 5k for show <laughs> you know what i'm talking about anyways we gotta get to work man do me a favor smash that subscribe button make sure to give me the thumbs up and that's all the business i got now you know what time it is let's work all right for those of you who are delusional thinking everybody jumping into the portal is a problem for coach prime and the buffaloes you got something else coming if you think that's a problem oh they're losing everybody if you a detractor you sitting back like oh my god you over there got your popcorn thinking we losing everybody no sir we ain't got no problems over here we're gonna be good over here okay let me go ahead and show you this clip right here so we can go ahead and put that noise to rest coach prime tell him we already know what we got coming in <laughs> y'all just don't know what we got <laughs> okay 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 okay, okay, okay. Good. exactly we already know we got some dogs coming that's why we got to make some room for these people to get up out of here you got mr courtney talking about after i recorded the video i dropped it i'm like wait a minute this guy's talking about practice i forgot about alan Iverson. i would have spassed on that dude talking about practice practice and you guys are reminding me in the comments like bro he's talking about practice i'm like wait a minute oh wait he ain't talking about game footage he's talking about practice footage if you're worrying about practice footage bro people do their game highlight footage they don't do practice footage but yo all of that stuff went over my hands i, I would have spat on that dude if i thought about the fact that he's talking about practice footage anyways courtney stop playing with me okay stop playing with me i didn't come out here to talk about courtney i came out here to talk about bwb <laughs> I think I finally found the reason why Matt Rule is upset with Coach Prime. Oh my goodness. Minding my business, doing my edits over here. I see a notification come across my phone off the wire. The athletic just retweeted an old article that they wrote in January and it has to do with the coaches grades <laughs> and I think this is the reason why Matt Rule is upset I think he read this article I gotta bring this article to you guys and you guys decide do you think this is why Matt Rule is upset or do you think this is why Matt Rule is after coach prime he ain't getting the type of love that coach prime is getting this is April 26 and this article was written in January like January 26 I believe Matt Rule get over it bruh let's go to the article right now so you can find out what's happening let's go all right guys so here we go with the power five you see coach prime right there baby all right we got Stuart mandel's college football coaching grades from Deion sanders to trent delford this was released january 26 2023 the 2022 2023 coaching carousel was not as high wattage as last year's lincoln rally or brian kelly edition but some notable names changed locales my list feels light on short things so it's almost certain to set a record for this aged well screenshots going over the power five guys colorado a plus jackson state coach Deion sanders there's arguably no other coach in the sport colorado realistically could have landed who could just generate the level of excitement coach prime has for the long-term laughing stock program he's already landed the type of high profile transfers and recruits who previously would not have paid the buffs any attention it's a home run hire for whether or not sanders even wins big the next coach wisconsin they got an A. Cincinnati coach Luke Facal, the first coach to lead a group of five team to the college football playoff, long seemed destined for a Big Ten job. Wisconsin athletic director Chris McIntosh was the one to pull it off. Facal feels like the ideal coach to uphold the program's deep-rooted blue-collar identity while also modernizing it, as evidenced by hiring Air Raid-influenced offensive coordinator Phil Longo. Facal was proven adept at developing overlooked recruits. Then we got Louisville. 
grade of A. Purdue coach Jeff Brown, my 2016 to 2017 coaching grades have been washed from the internet, but I'm fairly sure I gave Purdue an A for hiring Brown. Louisville gets the same for bringing him home. Brown is an outstanding offensive coach who led the Boilers to their best run in two decades, and now he returns to his school in a city where he and his family are football royalty. That's a lot to like. And here goes this hating joker right here, Matt Rue. I don't even know why they're giving him so much play right here. Stop playing with me with that big old picture. Get him up out of here. Let's read his anyway. Nebraska, A minus. <laughs> Take that, take that. Come on, Matt Rue. Ex-Carolina Panthers coach Matt Rue, the 47-year-old previously orchestrated remarkable turnarounds at Temple and Baylor, which should prove valuable in undertaking what could be a massive rebuild in Lincoln. He should do a better job than the predecessor, Scott Frost, of identifying and developing the type of athletes realistically gettable by a program in the heartland with no natural recruiting base. Yeah, who they're recruiting base? They're going to go east? They're going to go west? They're going to go to the California, yeah, they're gonna go to Florida. They ain't got no base. All they got is corn. Corn. You like corn? You better go out there and get some of those corn huskers to play for you and stop playing with me, Matt Rue. You on Rue Jack. Matt don't Rue Jack. Anyways, we're moving on to Auburn. B plus Liberty coach Hugh Freeze. From a pure football standpoint, there's not much to argue here. Freeze won and cheated at Ole Miss. <laughs> Y'all tell me about that story. What did he cheat on? Y'all know I didn't follow him. All right, what did he cheat on? Y'all let me know in the comments. Where he became a thorn in Nick Saban's side and won again at Liberty. But ethically, his hire definitely feels icky. And the fact Auburn fans weren't universally behind it led me to downgrade from a possible A- to a B+. I would not be surprised if he proves me wrong. I would love to know what Mel Tucker's grade is. My goodness, talk about ethics. Is that ethics or is that character? Buff fans, let me know in the comments. We're moving on to Georgia Tech with a grade of B. Interim coach Brent Key. I'm not generally a fan of promoting the interim coach, but the Tech alum and former Saban assistant did a remarkable job last season. Jeff Collins went 7-19 in ACC play in three plus seasons. He stepped in and let the Jackets to a 4-3 and three mark. And now they can build on that momentum. Arizona with the grade of B. B. Oregon offensive coordinator Kenny Dillingham. My colleague Ari Wasserman made a strong case for ASU hiring Dillingham way back in September. He's a 32-year-old up-and-comer and ASU alum who worked wonders with Bo Nix last season and should be an excellent recruiter. But also, he's 32 years old. He has been a Power 5 assistant for four seasons. There could be a steep learning curve before the Sun Devils get going. Mississippi State B- minus defensive coordinator Zach Arnett given the awful circumstances with Mike Leach passing away in mid-December. It's understandable why the school chose to promote its respected defensive coordinator. With some distance, however, it may prove more of a gamble to hand the reins of an SEC program to a 36-year-old whose narrow experience to date comprises skimming up defenses at San Diego State and Mississippi State. I didn't know that man passed away. Rest in power, Mr. Mike Leash. Illinois defensive coordinator, D.C. Ryan Waters. The 36-year-old did a fantastic job at Illinois, producing the nation's number two defense at a program with little recent success. But the two best coaches in modern Purdue history, Joel Tiller and Brom, were offensive innovators. Hiring a defensive-focused coach at a program that would always struggle to amass as much talent as the top half of the Big Ten seems a tad risky time will tell with all of these coaches all right moving right along to stanford the cardinal the singular cardinal Sacramento State coach Troy Taylor. Taylor is a great offensive mind who won big at an FCS school but has little experience recruiting at the Power 5 level and has hired several assistants who have none. Not ideal at a program steeped with challenges. Stanford's administration is ambivalent at best about big time football and may have settled for the cheapest candidate rather than the most confident inspiring. So they said, listen, man, we got education. We don't need no football, all right? Y'all can go ahead and handle that football stuff. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just keep bringing some money in. We got enough people who are rich and our alumni are rich and we don't need all that football money. So if we just win some games, we'll be cool with that. I hear you, Stanford. That's what's up. With a bunch of those smart folks, y'all definitely have the alumni to pump money back into that program and you ain't got to focus on no daggone football. I understand what 
with you at. I get you. Moving right along to the last one. It's a C minus for Cincinnati. Look at that. Cincinnati gets a C minus. That is interesting. You understand what I'm saying? Louisville coach Scott Satterfield. I don't get this one at all. Cincinnati won a sitting power five coach to lead the program into the Big 12. But this one was an underwhelming 15 to 18 in ACC play with the Cardinals. Satterfield had a great run at Appalachian State before that, but he also spent his playing career and nearly entire coaching career there. A school in that region would have made more sense. We make our arguments all the time. Coach Prime has changed the program. Coach Prime is changing Boulder. I'm telling you, man, just the spring game, the amount of money that Coach Prime generated, the amount of money that the Dion effect generated in that state. I mean, it's astronomical. The hotels, the local businesses, the energy that that place has. I mean, 40 47,000 people converging to a college town. Let's go to the comments and see what people are saying in the comments. So I'm not subscribed yet. So I can't really add my voice to the comment. But Nicholas A puts in quotes. It's a home run higher whether or not Sanders ever wins big. Quotations. Dude, what? Nicholas, let me ask you a question, Nicholas. How many of coaches that you know can generate the amount of revenue for a program or no, for a state, let alone a program? You got to stop the hate and ache. You got to understand the things that Coach Prime has already done for the program. You ain't got to like the guy to acknowledge that. Is it okay that we acknowledge sometimes that things are happening that we may not agree with? Nicholas, I'm sure you're going to figure it out. When the W start coming, you'll figure that out. Let's go to JB. Your first two for Cal is steeped in college football, especially Big Ten, whereas Sanders, much less so, he is clearly committed to maintaining a culture of team, taking the student part of student athletes seriously, as well as the development of character and maturation. Colorado, not so clear as to what the culture will be. Hmm interesting because coach prime is not about developing character and maturation that is exactly does jb live under a rock yeah jb i want i want to understand like were you when you wrote this or were you not awake or something because what you just described would be coach prime right because when we talk about character and maturation the characteristics the values that he wants out of the kids the things that he wants to make sure that those kids have unless you're just clueless you're definitely describing coach prime in those things because that's exactly what he's doing he's teaching these kids about life understanding that there's more to life than football letting them know to have character making sure that they're disciplined okay maybe you don't follow coach prime and maybe you don't really know him but i would invite you to go to my channel and um subscribe so that you can hear me spaz about coach prime and his character and how he holds the type of values that he is teaching at cu the type of values that he taught at jackson state the kids there are still singing his praises and i mean it's just it's, it's incredible that you say that you're describing exactly the reason why people love this guy so much because of the things that you're describing that you're saying you don't know or you're not clear about so in case you weren't clear that is exactly who coach prime is and that's exactly what he's doing he is teaching character football is going to handle itself but this guy teaches character maturation but like biggie says jb if you didn't know now you know you know i'm gonna leave the other one up to yo yo <laughs> i'm gonna leave it right there guys you know who i is i'm harry billion guys i'm harry b and that right there was the Liberian Perspective, TLP Sports Club. Blah.